morning, New Bethel. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. Let us stand for the reading of the word, please. The word comes from uh, Isaiah 41, verses 10, and it reads, Fear thy not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I read to you Isaiah 41, verses 10. May the Lord have a blessing especially the doers of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us continue to stand for prayer, please. Lord, we come to you as humbly as we know how, Lord. Lord, we come to you giving thanks, Lord. Thanks for this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thanks for this day that you have made, Lord. Yes. We will rejoice and be glad in the Lord. Lord, we come to you acknowledging you as God and God Almighty, Lord. Lord, there's no one greater than you, Lord. Lord, you're king of kings, Lord. You're the Alpha and Omega, Lord. Lord, we continue to give you praise for who you are, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. you're God and God Almighty, by your son. Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we come to you, Lord, giving thanks, Lord. Thanks for all the blessings that you've given us, Lord. Lord, if I had 10,000 tongues, Lord, it would not be enough to continue to praise you for all the blessings that you've given us, Lord. And Lord, we continue to be grateful, Lord, because you're grateful, Lord, you are a mighty, mighty God, Lord. With grace, Lord, and glory, Lord. Yes. Lord, we ask that you touch us with your presence this morning. Yes, Lord. Touch us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Guide this congregation, Lord. Guide this spoken word, the songs that are going to be sang today, Lord. May that spoken word and the song guide someone to ask, What must I be to be saved? Or what must I do to be saved, Lord? And Lord, we ask that you continue to be with us, Lord. Touch the pastor, and Lord. Touch his family. Touch every family in this congregation, Lord. Continue to guide us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Continue to uplift us, Lord. Lord, we give you thanks for our most, Lord, for the love that you've shown us. Despite it all, Lord, the love that you've given us, Lord, the love for your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, that love you've shown us, Lord, the greatest love of all, Lord. And Lord, we continue to give you thanks for that, Lord. Lord, I ask that you look down upon these churches, Lord, every church that's open to your doors, Lord, continue to grace them with your presence, Lord. Lord, look down, look down upon those, Lord, that could not be here today, Lord, those that are sick and shut in, Lord, continue to touch them with your healing power, Lord, the power that only you can give, Lord, power that's beyond any physician and med medication that, that, that will be given to them, Lord. Lord, continue to touch them, Lord, and continue to strengthen them.
liberty on this morning for worship. I'm reminded of a scripture in the Bible, and I think it's, and I know it's in the book of Revelation, where the Bible talks about the angels crying, holy, holy, holy. And I don't know about you, but I be practicing right now. Because I truly believe that the worship in heaven is going to be beautiful. And I imagine myself sometimes in a worshiping. I imagine myself like the angels crying, holy, holy, holy. One of the good things about being a believer, being making Jesus as Lord of your life, is that you have a destination that is sealed. And in that destination, there's victory from beginning to the end. So I employ to you early in this service, that today, don't leave without Jesus as Lord. Yeah. Don't leave without Jesus as Lord. Speak into every heart, young and old. Don't leave without Jesus as Lord. Hallelujah. If you have your communion cups, go ahead and grab them now. Ushers are around the wall. Greeters are around the wall to help you if you don't have it. Worthy is the lamb.
Good morning, Uncle Good morning. I'm cold, y'all. <laughs> My God. Oh. Announcements for March 5th. The Salem Baptist District presents 62nd DYF Youth Revival, March the 12th through the 15th. At North End Baptist Church, they youth walking it out with God through faith. The youth ministry is asking for all the Baptist nation to please come out. We get you to support our participation in the revival. Sunday, March the 12th, will be high attendance day. Thank you for your support. March 17th will be teachers meeting at 6.30 p.m. The Reverend Myron Taylor Academic Excellence Scholarship and Milo Park Sports Recreational Scholarship application period for applying will be open March the 1st through April the 18th. Proud located at the Greeters Desk. Free high equivalency classes will be offered at the Wealthy Church. Pre-registration Thursday, March 29th, 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Students completing the program will receive their high equivalency High School Diploma. New Belt is accepting application for their 2023 summer camp. Application for teachers, cooks, drivers are now being accepted. Contact Sister Donna Sanders for additional information. Free tax service will run from April the 15th. Attention ministry leaders before planning an event, always check with the office staff and notify the media ministry. Volunteers needed for near my men's security ministry, no experience necessary. Contact Dean James Augustus. Children Youth Ministry, contact Deacon Tyrone Smith. Food Pantry, contact Deacon Roland Amos. Kingdom Builders Ministry, contact Sister Javetta Carter, Sister Charlotte Hood. To report any members who are sick in the hospital or to report any deaths, you may call the church office or get a prayer request form for an usher. Prayer line available every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 6 a.m. Don't forget, including your prayers, our members, relatives, friends, those in bereavement, our service men and women, and our leaders in our churches and our countries. From God's sure by the seed for the spirit. Forgiveness is no longer allowing what has happened to poison you. Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Y'all have a good day.
Fellowship here in this church. So your Dollar for Hope box that you usually see in the front will resume again in June. We want to say thank you because you don't have to do it. But we know that the much is given. God expects us to give and to help the needy as well. So it's important that we help our youth to do that. And because of your generous donations, we are going to even do greater things. As the pastor said, we're going to have even greater outpour to our community because we open it up to the community as well. So at this time, I'm going to stop and I'm going to let the video play and then we're going to come back and talk to you a little bit more and it won't be very long. Thank you. Can we get the light? <coughs> Central. Scholarship Central is a scholarship search and application site. We are specifically for students from Missouri and the Metro East in Illinois, and we are free and easy to use. We bring together different scholarship providers to have their application all in one place to make the scholarship process easier for students looking for money for college. In your application, you want to go to myscholarshipcentral.org slash apply. You'll click that orange apply now button and it will take you to the page to create your account. Once you get to our main application page, you'll create, you'll click on that sign up button in the upper right hand corner and you'll create your account. You're going to use your email address, ideally not your high school email address because you'll lose access to that after you graduate, and then a password. Make sure to read those password requirements carefully because they are very particular. Once you have clicked the sign up button, you will get an email with a link to confirm your account. After you've confirmed your account, you will then complete the general application. The general application is like your profile. This is where you're going to enter all your basic information that the system will use to match you to scholarships. Really important that all information that you enter here is entered correctly. If you put your wrong county or graduation year or zip code or state, it will not show you the scholarships that you actually qualify for. You will also need to upload your most recent transcript. It does not need to be an official transcript, but you will need to upload your transcript to the general application. Once you're done with the general application, you need to go on to apply for specific scholarships. You're not qualified for any money just by completing the general application. Once your general application is done, the system is going to match you to scholarships that you qualify for. These will show up on your recommended opportunities list. These are scholarships where you have met the basic requirements. Every scholarship on this list might not be the perfect fit for you, but it's narrowed down are more than 150 scholarship opportunities to the point that you meet the basic requirements. This is where you will find the New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church Scholarship. So you will see it there. You can click on the title of the scholarship in blue to learn more about it, read the description, the eligibility, and the questions. And then once you're ready to apply, you'll click on that orange apply button. This list will automatically update as new scholarships open. So you can continue to log into my scholarship central and see what new scholarships have opened that you'll be able to apply for. This is where when you go to apply for a specific scholarship, this is where you'll provide things like your resume, essay, letters of recommendation, all the questions that are specific to that particular scholarship. A few tips on completing applications on My Scholarship Central. Make sure your application is completed fully, correctly, and on time. Any question that has a star asterisk next to it has to be answered to be able to submit, but we recommend answering all questions that you are able to answer when you're completing an application. Double check to make sure there are no errors. We want to make sure that we are able to contact you and we have all of your correct information. And make sure to apply on time. Our system will lock you out at 11.59 p.m. the day of the deadline. So don't wait until the last minute to complete your application. It's important to submit high quality work. This, whatever you submit, especially the essay, is how the organization will determine who gets the scholarship. So make sure you are submitting work that is worthy of earning a scholarship. It's important that you read the eligibility criteria to make sure that you qualify. 
Again, like I said, that recommended list is a good place to start, but everyone might not be a perfect fit. And if you don't qualify for a scholarship, don't apply. Odds are no one will ever read that application. It will be marked as ineligible and you will have wasted your precious time. Finally, it's really important to check your email. That's where we will contact you if we have any questions about your application, need information, or if we want to offer you a scholarship. Make sure you're checking the email associated with your account frequently. Right now, there are more than 125 scholarships open and accepting applications. Now, deadlines vary. Each scholarship program is run independently, but most application deadlines are in March and April. So keep an eye on my scholarships info. Once you start an application, you will get a reminder email as that deadline approaches. We do have a few scholarships that go into May and June, but we have very few opportunities that go into the summer. So I know it's a very busy time of year, but if you need scholarships for college, now is the time to apply. Benefits of using my scholarship central, and then it, our goal is that we want to save you time and we want to make this process easy. We're hoping that that general application is saving you time. You do not have to type in your name and your address and your high school over and over again. Once you do that general application once, all that information is stored in our system and you don't have to type it again. Everything is also digital. Any documents that you upload, letters of recommendation, once they're in our system, you can use them on any application that you need and they're all right there, easy to access. That recommended list, like I talked about, is customized to you. As a student in St. Clair County, Illinois, you're not going to see scholarships for a student in Columbia, Missouri. We consider the things that make you you, and we match you to scholarships to make the process easier. We also send those application deadline reminder emails, so if you have started an application and it's not done three days before the deadline, you'll get a reminder about that. And most importantly, the biggest benefit of using my scholarship central is there is a lot of scholarship money waiting to be applied for. Last year, more than 3,000 students earned $13 million in scholarships and interest-free student loans. So that money is just there waiting for you. So again, to start your application, you're going to go to myscholarshipcentral.org slash apply. If you have any questions, you can email support at myscholarshipcentral.org or talk to one of the contacts at New Bethel. So have a great day.
scholarship has been very, definitely very helpful for me. It's allowed me to, of course, reduce my fees, but also helps me save for next year because I'm starting pharmacy school in the fall. So yes, um, if you know anyone who's eligible for a scholarship, definitely let them know to apply because, as we all know, I don't want to be a broke college student, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, make sure everyone that needs information applies, and thank you all. Hey, uh, I, I just want to say, because uh, this process can be overwhelming. All that you saw up there can be overwhelming to us to our family, so there will be other opportunities to come to the church to get help filling out all this information, okay, because I was one of them broke college students. My, my daddy did the best he could, send me $15 every two weeks when I was in school, that was a lot of money, $15 every two weeks. And you know what, the way we do it around here is uh, we put scripture on it. I asked a buddy of mine, you know what, about this process, and he referred me to Proverbs 27, 20 through 24, talks about we need to be available to this next generation. Okay, and Lord bless me to get through college. I was able to bless my family. I was able to send my mama damn money. I sent my mama money that she don't even know about. But the Lord bless me, so Proverbs 27 and 20 and Joel, Joel 1, 2 through 4 talks about how we need to be available to this next generation.
Anybody know that he reigns forever? Look at your neighbor and say, he reigns forever.
But baptism without salvation is nothing but a bad. We thank you that you take on the form of Christ when you are baptized. You go into the water like he was buried, but we bring you back up like he was resurrected. So we pray for them right now in the name of Jesus that even as we baptize them later, that Father, that they will stay strong with you, that they will hold on to what they've done today. The mighty name of Jesus, let me inform you that baptism does not guarantee you a ticket to heaven. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. As an act of that confession, we give you baptism. Baptism alone cannot save you. You need somebody say, I need Jesus. James chapter 4, going to preach to you verses 1 through 10. Going to read for you for the sake of time, verses 1 and 10. It's our custom to read, stand for the reading of the word of God. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts? that war in your members. Take a walk to verse 10 because we can. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, this is what you do when problems arise. Come on, tell them again. Say, neighbor, this is what you do the next time you have a problem. Come on, have a seat in the presence of the Lord. So welcome that you all are here. That problems are a part of your life. Gonna happen. Just because you get saved doesn't mean problems go away. And because you are a believer doesn't mean that you are immune to issues. Your children can act crazy like anybody else's children. Your carburetor can go out and you retire them. Your water heater can go out and you retire them. Things are going to happen because you live in an earthly realm. Here is the reason that you get saved. You get born again because that when problems arise, you have an advocate in Christ Jesus. That Jesus is there long walking alongside of you to get you through those rough patches. Yes, yes, it is Jesus that stood next to you when your granny died. Yeah, yeah. That's why even though you tried to overdose and drink yourself to a stupor, God kept you. It was Jesus that walked alongside of you when somebody died when you thought you should have died. It's been Jesus the whole time walking alongside of you when you lost that job that you thought you would retire from. Problems are coming to your house. But this is what we got to do when problems arise. Scriptures give us clear indication, clear matter of fact of how we are to handle the situation. This Bible story that we are reading from, this book of the Bible, has only but one author that church history teaches us. There are four chains that are recorded in the New Testament text, but only one can be the writer of this text. It's not... James, the brother of John, the son of Zebedee, because the writings of this book do not line up with John the Revelator or his other writings. This is indeed the half-brother of Jesus. All of my black power brothers in here that believe that Jesus didn't have brothers and sisters, you'll find that in the Gospel of Mark, there was a story about how Jesus' brothers and his mother came to the door. They asked him not this the carpenter's son this half brother the reason that he is a half brother is that they got the same mama but they got different daddies you do know that James's daddy is named Joseph because he is born on earth but this Jesus that we declare to you don't get confused don't get it twisted and don't get it messed up that he is the son of man that means that he is 100% God and he's 100% man. How in the world can he be God and man at the same time? He's just God like that. Yeah, he can be God in your universe, but he also can be a man that is touched with the feelings of your infirmities. Tempted at every point, yet without sin. This is the Jesus, the Christ that we declare to you and many other false religions. 
Jehovah Witness, the Mormons, even Islam, can't understand why he can be God and man. That's why Jesus himself only gives himself the title as Son of Man. You never find in scripture where any man called him the Son of Man. Typically, man would call him the Son of God. It is only Jesus, the God made flesh, according to Isaiah 9. It is that Jesus that calls himself the Son of Man. It is the same Jesus that we find even in the incarnated God. We find him in God in the Old Testament. When Moses declared, whom shall I say sent me? He said, tell Pharaoh, I am that I am sent you. Jesus echoes this in the New Testament by declaring to you and I, I am the bread of life. I am the water when you're thirsty. I am God made flesh. It is this half brother of that Jesus that writes our text today. He declares to us the outside of the book of Psalms, outside of the book of Ephesians, this is my favorite book in the Bible. I love the writing of James because James is in your face talking about how to live holy. How to live righteously. He doesn't sing the song, do you have good religion? He tells you how to have good religion. He tells you that you got to walk right then. You got to talk right then. You got to lay aside all filthiness and all malice. Don't shoot me down when I'm preaching good. Because we want to be saved and still hold on to the world. We want to be born again but still act like there's nothing wrong. And can I tell you that I told you at the beginning that problems are going to come to your house. But that's not an excuse for you to live filthy. That's not an excuse for you to live how you want to live. But nudge on your neighbor early and say, neighbor, I'm trying to get right. Well, the only way that you can get right is by casting all of your cares upon the Lord. Because he is the one that shall be with you from the beginning. He'll be with you in the middle and he'll be with you at your end. Matter of fact, he said in his word, I'll never leave you, nor." It is this writing that James declares to us. And this is a Jewish book. He's writing to Jews. He's declaring to them how to live righteously. Because Jews thought that their salvation was in the law. They thought that if they followed what Moses declared to them, they could have eternal life. What they found out is that the law was nothing but a schoolmaster. Can I tell you, any of y'all got a teacher that y'all remember in school that when y'all got grown, if y'all saw him now, y'all would have some words with him? Y'all got a teacher like that that told me that I would never be anything, and I probably told myself before I got saved, I told myself that if I ever saw him, it's going to be some furniture moving. But when I saw him, I was already saved, so I had to backtrack on that, and I couldn't lay my hands on him. But if I could tell him what he told me, that I wasn't going to be nothing, he couldn't see into my future. He didn't know that I was going to meet God on June 20th, 1999, and that that same God would now renew in my heart and renew in my mind. He didn't see what God saw. And can I tell you, there are people who have proper lied over your life, and they said, you would Ship 
tossed and driven, battered by the angry sea. But with God, I can do all. James says to them, stop relying on human effort. Because when problems come, your human effort can't understand why this is happening to you. You ever ask yourself that I don't mess with no lie. I treat everybody right. I stayed in my own. And why does things still happen? Because you are in a fallen world and you have an adversary. Yeah. The devil don't care how many times you came to church. He don't care how many good things you did. Matter of fact, you don't give the church. You rather give your money to the other way because you think the church is full of crooks and the devil is alive. So you try to do good deeds to get saved. And the devil don't care how many good deeds you do. All he cares about is killing, stealing, and destroying. So have you ever, ever encountered, I hate to say it like this, a fool? That no matter what you do to that fool, all he can teach you or all she can teach to do is do bad to you. I mean, you can love on them, and you can cook them good food, you can take them cookies, and they just so foolish, all they do, that's Satan. You, you can try to earn your way to heaven. You can try to earn God's love. But God is saying, you ain't got to do that. Because while you was yet a sinner, I commended my love towards you that I died when you should have died. Matter of fact, I took you off the cross, put myself on the cross. You ain't got to earn nothing. James writes to this Jewish community. He says, stop trying to earn it. Your human effort won't understand why you're going through. I, I don't know, God, why are you making me go through this? Some people have not only lost a mother, but then they lost an auntie, and then they lost a, a brother in the same year. And you trying to find out God in the world. How in the world did that happen? I, I remember getting pulled over by the police. I was uh, speeding. Y'all pray for me. This was some years ago. It wasn't recent. Here it is. And, 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 I, and the cop was uh, running my tags. And they found out that I had an outstanding ticket in another city. And I didn't know they talked. <laughs> why is that city, or that, why is that state in my business in this place? What, what y'all doing over here? It's a whole other zip code. Well, she said, Mr. Norris, I, I hate to tell you that, that uh, I'm going to have to uh, uh, take you down. I said, the preacher? <laughs> she said, you weren't preaching when you were sitting. And as she was kind of getting herself together to take me down, I said, look over there. They prostituted and selling drugs, and you heard about a ticket? This is what she said to me with such sincerity. She said, that ain't got nothing to do with you. Let's deal with your ticket right now. I said, no, I want to talk about that over there. In other words, in other words, God, I'm not doing as bad as so-and-so. Why are you, why you letting this happen to me? And that's the arrogance and pride of the believer that you think your stuff don't stay and Satan don't matter who's doing what. He can try to kill everybody. So, 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 so James says, do not, do not try to understand it in your human wisdom because problems come to the same and the unsafe. But how the saved handle it should be different than the unsaved. And no, because you got baptized does not mean you are saved. This once saved, always saved, you got to go out the window. I got to, once God comes in my life, I got to draw nigh to him. Every day I'm saying, God, clean me, make me new. Here's how the Bible says, I die daily. have a spouse that sleeps with a heater. Even in the summertime. I'm not saying the names or anything or looking anywhere. I'm just telling you, you may have somebody in your family. And, and they get close to the heater even in the 
the sun. Air conditioning on, wheel running high, it's still a heater going. I'm trying to find and afraid. I'm trying to find out what's going on. And no matter how much the night goes on, they're getting closer to that heat. And that fan is blowing too. And I'm trying to find out which one do you want, the fan or the heat? Help me help you. I'm not saying no names, y'all. Trying to tell you my experience in life. And so I'm drawn to the heat because you know your temperature drops at night. And that's what happens in your life that God is saying, no matter what's going on, what season it is, I need you to draw to me. Because there are going to be some nights where it drops and you got to draw nigh to me. And, and what I did tell you that there's often some nights, even in the summertime, when that air condition on 47 below zero, that that heat feels pretty good. Because every now and then, when I'm over there talking about how hot it is, that temperature drops, I want to draw a little near that heat too. Oh, That law is only to bring you to God. So James starts to them and shows them how to live holy. Here are the four things that I captured out of the text. That, that James then pushes them to now have a discussion with themselves. He says in chapter 4, my favorite chapter, like Ephesians 4, he says in chapter 4, he says, where do fightings and wars come from among you? In other words, why do we have church splits? Somebody sent me a video of a pastor being installed. This pastor was getting ready to be installed, and this lady thought she was being moved by the Holy Ghost. On his installation day, she takes the mic and starts telling why he shouldn't be installed. No sin, just what she felt. On the installation day, it's guest there. Right? It's guests there. And because she had been a member for so long, she took the mic and began to talk about why they shouldn't be installed and how they didn't vote and all this different stuff. Now, the nerve of people at a church, don't shoot me down when I'm talking good, that, that at a church service, you're going to do that. It's because, look at verse number one in chapter four, even of your lust that war in your members. And the first thing y'all think about when I say the word lust, you think I'm talking about sexual sin, and that's not the only thing that you lust for. Some of y'all lusting for power. You want to be in control. That's why you wave your checkbook before you wave your Bible. Because you want to be in control, you don't want to be anointed. I'm preaching good and I got three classes, but that's okay. The, the lust that wars in your members. He says, that's why fightings happen. That's why we have church splits because everybody got some lust going on. Oh, Not just for somebody else's spouse, for the wrong stuff. Yeah. Stuff don't please God. Look at verse number two. He asked another question. This is what the answer. He gave them in verse number two. He says, for which come wars and fightings among you, ye lust and have none. So you try to get this power. You don't get nothing. You kill with your words. You put other churches down to lift yours up. You put other people's children down to put your... You kill with your words. And y'all thought you ain't kill nobody, but you have with your words. And some of y'all with y'all looks. Where y'all sign out people, I go, Jesus. If looks to kill, Pastor, say something. Well, why are you looking up there for? Right? You kill and desire to have, and you steal. Can cannot obtain. You fight in war, in Sunday school, in auxiliary meetings, in your little secret groups in your in your house, like they eat dinner at Lava Wada and, and Brick Top. You fight and you war, yet you have not. Wait a second, because you have to, oh, that's it. No, he read verse 3. You ask, and you don't receive. It got quiet in the church. 
Are y'all listening to hear what it is? Because you act amiss that you may consume it, back to verse 1, because of your own lust. All right, now. Only reason I want to preach is because I want to be seen. Only reason I want to sing is because I want to be seen. Only reason I want to get baptized because I no, no, no. I'm doing this because God, I want to please you. This is what James is telling those Jews. Stop pleasing me. This is what I need the church to do. This is what I need you to do because your lust will pull you from God. Your desires. So I need you, write it down, I need you to get focused. I need you to get focused on pleasing God. I don't work on my closing when I preach. I don't, only thing I work on is staying true to the text. And I say, God, if I please you, somebody gonna get blessed. Some of my worst sermons have been when I tried to please man. But when I found out that if I just please God, regardless of what I say, how you take it, if I just please him, somebody gonna get blessed. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to please God. Yeah. Yeah, it may look funny to you, you may talk about me, but if I please him, you will get blessed. Why am I going to get blessed? Because you sit next to me, but you can't get blessed unless you get focused. Come on, make it clean, man. God, he says, stop worrying. Stop trying to make it happen. Stop. I see most churches choose the wrong leader. Based on family heritage as opposed to what God said. Come on now. So now, because I started it, I got to pass it down. But what if he or she is not called to preach? I'm in somebody's business. Good. This is what I love. Right. Because we got to stay focused on pleasing him, not just trying to do us. And that's the issue with church, is that we want to do us as opposed to doing him for him and not even worry about us. That's hard to do because if you just don't worry about you, who's going to worry about you? That's where God comes in. He says, he says don't, don't, I need you to be focused. I need you to be so laser focused that, that nothing bothers you. Look at verse number five. Look at verse number five. And then we're going to transition number six. I'm coming to a close. But somebody scream, focus. Come on, say, I want you to be supernaturally focused. God, if this don't bring you glory, I don't want to do it. So that means some of the text messages that you send it ain't bringing God glory. So stop sending them. I know some of the Facebook posts that you posted don't please God. So stop, don't shoot me down when I'm preaching good. Yeah, don't do it because if it don't bring him glory, we shouldn't be doing it. Do you think that the scripture's saying in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth the envy. What spirit is he talking about? Not the Holy Ghost. Because that spirit in you, that, that part of you that has not submitted to God, is that's not focused. It wants, it wants to do its own thing. Look at verse 6 and 7. Here's what he says. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resists the proud. Now, now, I'm not a political pastor, nor am I a hater, but I am a man of truth. That's why I have to pray for the church who kept telling us that Donald Trump was God's man. It's a proud man. God's resisting you. God is resisting any organization, Democrat, Republican, that is not submitted to God. God is resisting you. That's what the scriptures say that God resists the proud. You can be a president, you can be a pastor, you can be a deacon, you can be a choir member, you can be a trustee, you can be a lay member. God resists, he opposes those that are proud. Can I help you that pride brings problems? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pride makes you go to places that you shouldn't go because you think ain't nobody do nothing with you. Oh, yeah. I got these hands, but I got somebody got this gun, and them hands ain't gonna bite, you know, bite no book. Pride that gets you in trouble. He resists the proud. But look what he says. He gives grace. Now, what's the difference between being humble and being a doormat? Okay, a doormat has no voice. Doormat just lets anything and everything happen to him or her. Humble people say, I got a boundary because the 
scriptures give me a boundary. Right. You're not going to talk crazy to me. You're not going to talk down to me. Why? Because the Bible tells me he knows the thoughts I have towards me, thoughts of good, not evil, to bring me to an expected end. Humble people are not doormats. They just tell you how it is based on what his word says. He gives grace to the humble. Lord, I thank you that I'm not where I need to be. But God, I look back, I'm so happy that I'm not where I used to be. And God, I give you glory that I'm still a work in progress. But me being a work in progress is not being an excuse for me to be rude and be mean and be nasty. See, the problem is we keep declaring that we are under construction. But my problem is, is that you've been under construction on the same thing for the last 30 years. At some point, construction got to end. With that peace. Verse 7. Look at verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will what? Okay, so 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 focus is number one. Number two, you got to prioritize prayer. No, you, you got to pray. See, see, submitting yourself to God says, God. It won't happen unless you are behind it and in front of it and around it. Yeah. So the only way I can get direction from God is if I begin to pray. Because men ought to always pray. And matter of fact, Jesus is getting ready to be crucified. What does he do in John 17? He prays. Matter of fact, he knows they're coming to arrest him. What does he do in the Garden of Gethsemane? He prays. Matter of fact, when he comes out,
to learn how to resist him. Some of y'all resisting me now. You only here for the baptism. You only here to see what's going on. You only here for A, B, and C. So you hoping I get done quick. But I'm telling you right now, the same way you resisting me, I need that same energy with Satan. And when he come against you, you tell him, nah, brother, I ain't going back that way, nah. I've been there, done that, got the album, and it wasn't good. I ain't going back. Some of y'all favorite artists, y'all let them give y'all bad albums, and y'all say, it was okay. And then you buy the next album because you're hoping it's going to be good. God is saying, resist him. Prioritize prayer. Yeah. Look at verse 8. Here it is. Verse 8. Here it is. Draw nigh to God. And he will. Remember your parents, you say, if you take one step, God will take two, something like that. This is what they mean. Draw nigh. That means come. So, so come as you are doesn't mean jeans, t-shirts, no tie, whatever, right? It has nothing to do with a dress code. So if you wear a suit and you don't wear a suit, it don't mean you're less safe or not safe. Come as you are, men, with all the junk that's in your heart. Come to God as you are. Because there's some people with suits on that are full of the devil. And some people with t-shirts on full of the Holy Ghost. So come as you are has nothing to do with a dress code. It has everything to do with your heart code. Somebody say, I've been messed up, but come as you are. My mind ain't all the way right, but come as you are. I got some things going on in my life, come as you are. I got some stuff in my phone that shouldn't be there, come as you are. I got some stuff in my Facebook, come as you are. I got some deals that I got to delete, but come as you Draw nigh to God. Draw nigh to God, and God will, God shall, God show enough will, draw nigh to you. In other words, when you come to him, you say, God, I ain't got no strength. I've been trying to delete these text messages. I just can't get over it. Matter of fact, when I delete their name, I still know their number. God, I need you to help me. He says, draw nigh to me, come on. Because the more you come to me, the less you're going to have an appetite for that. He says, draw nigh to me. He says, but here is how you handle problems. You got to cleanse your hands. So in verse 7, he's not just saying, y'all still here? He's not just saying, be saved. He's saying, you got to walk the walk and talk the talk. That, that he's using an Old Testament uh, 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 typology here. He's saying that when the priests went into the temple, they would wash their hands. Some of y'all grew up in the old church and when we used to take communion, we would wash our hands in a basin before we broke the bread. Now, it's 2023, we got our nice little cute cups. Take care of stuff with your own hands, right? But back when we grew up, we would wash our hands and we would break that bread in front of the saints and we would give it to them. He's saying, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. What he's saying, stop having one foot in the world and one foot in the church. Come on now. He's saying, make a commitment. Okay, this is how you'll understand. And this is for all my brothers, and I was hate to put you out here like this, but this is for the women too. They are scared to get married. Oh, You're scared to get married because you think there might be somebody better. Thank you for that one clap because they look really fun. They're hoping, well, if I commit to this one, and then they'll come with that philosophical garbage. Well, man wasn't intended to have just one woman. Then why did God say that this man and this woman shall be one? Why does he say that? And don't bring up David and Solomon because they were not the case study because God did not like what David and Solomon did. Even though David was a man after God's own heart, that didn't mean he acted like God. That means he was pursuing God. In other words, God did not like what David and Solomon did. Come on, preach. Having multiple women. Preach it. <laughs> the reason that we don't want to make a commitment to God because we think we're going to miss something in the world. If you go to the club right now, all my grown people, they doing the same stuff you was doing. Broke. Buying, 
designer, but they rent is overdue. Yep. Hoping somebody pay their cover charge. He says, clean your hands. Purify your heart. He says, if you do these things, guess what will happen? Even though problems will come, you will handle them. Here it is, write this down, that I need you to actively fight against Satan. I mean, when he comes against you, you use the word of God and you tell him, man, I'm not going back there. I've been washed by the blood of Jesus. Look at verse number nine. Look at verse number nine. Look at verse number nine. Here it is. He says, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your, wait a second. I didn't get saved to be happy. I didn't get saved uh, to be afflicted. What is James talking about? He said all that he he and Kiki and you doing with sin, turn it around and really look at your sin the way God does. He says, don't, don't try to make your sin okay, but no, become afflicted. God, that when I mess up, God, forgive me. God, God, I want to get my mind right. He says, be afflicted more than we let your laughter. How you talk about your sin, you girl, you remember when? No, I don't remember none of that. I'm saved now, and I ain't going back. He says, let that be turned to heaviness because when you really get with him, when you really let that go, guess what happens? You begin, you become disgusted with how you live. Let me go some of y'all wrote because y'all getting quiet. Have you ever thought about some of the folks you dated? And you like, what was I thinking? Some of y'all can't say that this. Right now. I don't know. Here it is. Y'all thinking to yourself, what in the world was I thinking? You ever thought about some of the stuff you did? And you're like, what was I thinking? Drinking from the same bottle. And you don't know who that person kissing. Come on, man. I get some help. Y'all ain't come for nothing real. Y'all can't for some real cute stuff. No. He said, when you think about your sin, it shouldn't make you smile. It should make you cry. But you should smile because, thank God, he didn't let me die in that sin. Turn me up so I'm ready to go home. Here it is. Is that the problem is, is that we're laughing and smiling over our past, but we're frowning about our future. But look at somebody and say, when the problem comes, I know I got a future in him. Y'all got the wrong name, but they still sleep. Tell them to wake up and say, you got a future in him. So I'm sad about what I went through, but I'm happy with how I came out. Here's the last point. Look at verse number 10, and I'm getting out of your way. It says, humble yourself in the spirit of the Lord, and he shall live. I'm talking to the humble folk right now. That you know and I know that if it had not been for God, the problem that you're facing now would have took you under. But you're still standing, not because you got all the money, not because you got a last name, but you're standing because you got a rock to lean on. I want you to look at your neighbors and neighbor, let's go to church and say, neighbor, I'm so happy I got God. Because I would have failed, but I, now I know that he's a good God. Why don't you look at somebody and say, he's a real good God. Y'all got the wrong name, but look at him again and say, he's a real good God. Yes, he is. And that's why he said, humble yourself. And the Lord is going to lift you up. You ain't got to lift yourself up. But the Lord will lift you up. How do you know? He's going to lift you up. Well, on Friday night, I was on my way to hell. But the Lord reached down. And he lifted me from a mommy clay. Ain't the Lord all right? Look at your neighbor. And say, neighbor, I got a testimony about the goodness of God. Say, neighbor, I said, say, neighbor, I got a testimony about the goodness of God. Because when I was prideful, he humbled me. When I was going astray, he aligned me. And now I can truly say that if it had not been for the Lord who was on I know exactly where I would be. I would be down with no hope. I would be tossed with no way to go. But the Lord smiled on me. The Lord had grace on me. Is there anybody 
need something to drink because I'm seeking to please God. I'll find something to give them and give them something to drink because I'm humbling myself. And the same way that I was an enemy of God is the same way that he, he died for me. So I got to give them something to drink. A problem comes. You tell that problem. I'm humble to myself. And God's going to lift me up. You might have knocked me down. But I just feel that the door is getting ready to open up. Will you want the three people to say, there's about to be a door open for you. Come on, don't tell me. preached by our pastor today. We welcome you again online. And right now we are at the point of service where uh, you make a decision. You make a choice after you heard the word declared today uh, that you are going to resist, that you are going to humble yourself, and that you are going to seek to please God. Maybe you are someone who hasn't received Christ today and you need to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Today you can do that even online. You can commit online. You can commit uh, your soul to the Lord online. For we know that, you know, you're not in the building, but there is no distance in the spirit. Uh, there's as simple as confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confessing him as Lord and Savior of your life. Or maybe you're someone who is saved, but you, you need a church home. Or you need a church home. You need a place, a community. You need a to be around amongst other believers. New Bethel will welcome you and open arms. We would love to have you. Uh, or maybe 
you someone who you backslid, you know, you started to allow the ways of the world and the opinions of other people to impede on your life as opposed to what the word of God says. My brother, my sister, no need to be ashamed or no need to feel down and discouraged. You can recommit your life to the Lord. You can rededicate the Lord. For he is the God of not only a second chance, but a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth. <laughs> there is no amount of time or limit that you can put on the grace of God. So God's grace is on our life. And if that is you, you find yourself uh, have not made Jesus your Lord and Savior, or you need to rededicate, or you need to, you need a church home, you can do so today. Minister Cornell is going to pray with us and lead us today. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word on this morning. We thank you for the audience online who are uh, listening to this word. We lift them up before you right now, asking them to move by your spirit in their life, Lord. Draw them closer to you. Draw them by your spirit, Lord. So no man can come and let you draw them. We give you our praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. Anoint, anoint, and anoint today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you are a person that has made that decision, please inbox us. We promise that someone will be in touch with you today. Also, we want you to stay tuned so that you can sow uh, into this word, you know, what the Lord lays on your heart. No dollar amount is too big or too small, but you want to sow into this ground so that you can reap a harvest for later. So stay tuned and we'll see you.
Let me show you how to sow. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest time. So tithing is what you belongs to God. It's holy. Anything over beyond your tithing, you give us a sacrifice, scholarship, benevolence, church anniversary, building fund. That's over and beyond your time. So don't feel bad if you don't have what somebody else has. You give as God has given you a measure of faith. Everything you do, everything you give goes towards the ministry. So we give the Lord praise and we give him honor concerning that peace. Amen. So if you're sowing today, there's three ways that you can give. You can give online through our website, through BethelMBChurch.com. Look for our, our uh, give app. app. You can the traditional way, which is walking around. If you need an envelope, there should be one on the back of your chair. But then you can give my favorite way is through Cash App. I give immediately when I get paid. I sow my tithes. I sow my offering immediately because it's easier for me. However you want to give, we made it applicable for you. All right? We made make sure that you have that ability. Amen. Let me pray with you real quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare a blessing over these your people financially. Thank you that you give them the seed to sow and you multiply the seed so. I thank you that God that you cause all grace to abound towards us, that we have all sufficiency and we want nothing. I break now, I thank you that you're breaking the back of debt. You're breaking the back of lack in the modern name of Jesus. And you're causing God, the favor of God, to be on every giver's life in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you that right now our second floor and our education wing are fully complete, fully debt free. And Father, I give you the glory and the praise concerning these things. I magnify your holy name for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, we say amen. You're in the hands of our ushers.
praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. We are a missionary Baptist church. That means that we are on a mission to baptize. The name is in the name. So what we would like to do is we have four candidates. I got we got four candidates for baptism. And so we want the families of those uh, candidates to come on up. Our first candidate. Zoroya Hemet. We like her parents and her family to come on up. Let's yeah. see our first candidate. Zoroya has made a commitment to the Lord. And after baptism happens, you have to walk with the Lord. Come on up, y'all. Come up close. Y'all come up close. Let me ask Charlie, excuse me, juice with you. Where is mom at? She, she called for you. You come on to the front. She called for you in the back. I'm going to get my mom. We're going to make sure you're up front, mom. Now, family, I give you this charge that you're here to witness this. Your job is to hold her accountable for this baptism. You love her through the Lord. You encourage her to come to church. You encourage her to read her mind and lay hand after this. Amen.
group. Also on next Sunday at 8 a.m., we will have training for small group leaders. So if you would like to be one of the uh, people that facilitates the small group, please meet me here on next Sunday at 8 a.m. God bless you all.